By now millions of people have seen this video, where a hand grenade is thrown into a German bunker's air vent, dropping it right back onto the ground. But was this actually a inventive design, or was it just a nice little thing found on one specific bunker alone? During World War II the German bunkers built on the Atlantic Wall were mostly standardized designs. The amount of concrete, steel and fittings were known beforehand. This would have made them extremely easy to build in rapid time all over Europe. The bunkers ventilation system was standardized as well. Fresh air was pumped inside the bunker keeping out toxic gases. Even though the Allies never used chemical weapons, the Germans still implemented countermeasures against them. And up until 1942 only one air intake was fitted and this was deemed enough by the Festung Pioneers designers. But a new design was made for the Atlantic Wall alone and so a second air vent was added. So was this new design actually designed for the purpose we see in the video? Now, not really, this new design would have been an entire system to protect mainly against flamethrowers. The two vents and pipe system was so designed to let the flamethrower liquid flow down and out of the bunker again. The vents were also closed off with a thin steel plate to prevent an enemy from throwing in a grenade. But this entire system would make it easier for the air filter inside to cope with the fumes and smoke. Because the Germans lacked so many building materials during the war, you often see these air vents open. Which was of course dangerous for the bunker crews inside. This would lead to the placement of these types of older armored grills which were actually a leftover from the 1930s and an older design. And as you can see these aren't a downgrade, nobody is getting anything through these heavy steel plates. The actual video we are looking at today was filmed at the Hillman site. On the site the bunkers are missing the steel plates and these were probably taken off by metal scrappers at one point. During the battle for WN-17, nicknamed the Hillman Fortress by the British, these plates were on the bunker when the British assaulted the strong point. So with these plates in place, throwing in a grenade would have been a hard task to do. You would have to pry open the metal cover first with a enemy machine gun pointing at your back. How this ever happened in any combat scenario. Of course there were vents left open because of the lack of materials possibly leading to an event like this. And the Germans did install in some cases dummy vents that would possibly lure in an allied soldier to throw in a grenade. He would either be shot in the back by an MG position or have himself been blown up by the grenade booby trap. And to my knowledge none of these booby traps were ever installed on the D-Day landing beaches. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to have a look at these types of air vents yourself, you can find them in the following locations. WN05, 16, STP09, the Grand Bunker and the Macy and Crispic batteries all have group bunkers that would have had this system installed. Happy bunkering. I want to thank the Instagram Normandy Bunkers for the information I got for this video and for the video itself. They also have a beautiful site I would recommend you go pay them a visit for some extra information on fortifications if you're interested. If you want to support the channel join my Patreon or become a channel member. Hit that like button and leave a comment, every little bit helps. Have a great weekend and see you in the next one.